Nico and the Sword of Light, this show that we created, uh, Chaos Adira, myself, Jim Bryson, Adam Jeffcoat, it just won an Emmy. So I want to make this video all about the most important things that I found to take something from an idea all the way across the finish line making it into something like a TV show or a movie or whatever it might be, okay? Here are the number one tips. Number one, create an honest and great story. Now, what do I mean by honest? I mean something that feels genuine, something that feels realistic, something that feels believable, okay? It comes from a genuine place. It might be something fictional. It might be like a, a fish loses his son in the ocean and needs to go and find him. Well. If it's done in a genuine way, you can still get that connection between like father and son and you know, that kind of thing can really hit at the core of uh, people's emotions to have them really connect with it. So that was number one. Number two, consistent regular effort beats spurts of intensity. This I found to be so helpful and something that I've only learned over years and years of just being in the industry. I used to be crazy intense. I used to be so intense, it would be like four hours of sleep a day, five hours of sleep a day for a few years. And that really messed up my arm. Um, I didn't take any breaks, things like that. Giant spurts of intensity will only last so long. Consistent hard work can last forever. And that's what I found to be true. Not only that, but consistent hard work will create momentum. So that's what we did with Nico and Sword of Light. We didn't have a lot of time. It wasn't our full-time job. So instead, we just did it on the weekends. We did it at nighttime, just a few hours. Um, not crazy into the night, but it was very consistent and we would always meet up. And that's what created the momentum. That's what kept the project going. And that's what, in the end, got it through the finish line. Number three, looking for influencers to spread your word and how technology helped us along the way. But the main thing is look for the influencers. So how can you look for the influencers? Here's a great tip. Go to Google, look up a bunch of images of products, projects, uh, stories, whatever it might be that are somewhat related to what you're doing, has similarities to it. Okay, upload them to Google through images. You know how you can click on images and you can upload a photo? Search that photo, then go back to web and then look up all the websites, all the blogs, all the influencers, all the sites that love to talk about that particular thing that's very similar to what you're doing. Then you can approach those people. Now you just filtered out the whole entire internet and you found all the top influencers uh, that would be interested in spreading the word about your product. How did technology help along the way? Well, that was another part to our overall plan was to make an animated comic book, first of its kind. Not symbol animation, not just like, you know, pieces that move, but actual traditionally animated, every, every frame is hand drawn, a different drawing, things like that, panning in, zooming in, stuff like that. Um, that's what we're talking about. The first of its kind, 2D traditionally animated. Um, and that got all the technology people interested. So then we can look up all the people that were interested in animated comic books, stuff like that, and promote our you know, project to them as well. And most of them bit because that's exactly what they're looking for to create content for their users. Okay, number four, create a proof of concept. We did this in two ways. We did this through iTunes Store by creating an app for our animated comic book, and that way we can see how many people downloaded it, how many people bought it, so on and so forth. But we also put it on as a Kickstarter, not just to raise money, to, but also to gain eyeballs. We were already two-thirds done by the time we did the Kickstarter. That way we have a lot of content to show people so they can really get an understanding of what we're going for and get them really excited about this product now that they can see a good portion of it already done. We just need everybody to help us push it across the finish line. Then when we actually got it past the finish line, we actually finished the app, we submitted it to Apple. It really gained a lot of momentum, a lot of popularity, and at its height, it was number one in like 36 countries around the world in its category. So all these things 
helped to create this proof of concept. We raised our Kickstarter money uh, more than what we needed and we had this number one app that obviously there's lots of fans that were downloading this thing so that uh, all the studios, all the important next people that we want to contact now know that there's an audience for it. Number five, it's probably most trickiest, but if you do all the other steps really well, it won't be that hard. It's connecting with great partners, great powerful partners. So after you hit number one on the charts, you know, in the app store and you do a very successful Kickstarter, a lot of people's eyes light up and it attracts a lot more interest. And we gained a lot of interest from a lot of different people, a lot of producers, a lot of different studios, different companies, things like that, uh, all interested in making it into something. We eventually went with Amazon because first of all, I buy a lot of stuff of Amazon, so I'm already a big fan. And um, they're into the whole binge watching thing, creating a whole series and putting out the series all at once. And we love that idea. We think it's the future. We went with them because of that. And while they connected with Titmouse Studios, and so through that, we got connected with this big, powerful animation studio that's created lots of hit TV shows and things like that. Um, so we knew we were in good hands. And lastly, create a team culture of sharing and contributing. That was something that I found very key to our success from initial just conception of the idea all the way down to creating the show. Now what I mean by this is that we always we never wanted to kind of show ourselves as being like the leader or the creators of this show. Like we're the creators and you got to do what we got to, you know, it wasn't about that. It was about helping Titmouse. It was about helping Amazon and in any way possible, even when they weren't asking for it, we would just try and help. And I feel like that has helped tremendously in the overall culture of the people that worked on uh, Nico and the Sword of Light, it really created this spark of energy, motivation, uh, and all that good stuff that you need to create a great show. And if you have all those things, then I think, uh, you know what, taking something from an idea all the way down to making it into something like a TV show or a movie or things like that, it's definitely very possible. So I hope these tips have helped you. I hope you spread them on to other people. And uh, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You can hit the Eiffel Tower right there and uh, you can subscribe there. Or um, I guess I hope to see you some other time. All right, take care everybody. Artist self-doubt. Just about everybody goes through it. And what do you do about it? You know, my own dreams before were I just want to get a job. I just want to get a job doing art, sharpening pencils, whatever it might be. Uh, why? Because I didn't dare to dream big. You know, I had a lot of self-doubt. So how did I get myself to work in Hollywood movies, 